Because when he comes back, I want to go with him. When I see him, I want to see him in peace. I want him to be happy with me. I want the angels, the grandstand of heaven, when I arrive, I want everybody to be looking at me and say, he's here. Hey, he's here. I want everything that I do on this earth to be pleasing to God. When I wake up in the morning, I want every demon in hell to know I'm coming for you. I'm going to kill one of y'all today. Whether it's a suicide demon, whether it's a depression spirit, whatever it is, I want to kill a demon every day and I want to win a soul every day. Trust me with your, with your forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. Happy Jesus must. And we know his name is not Jesus. We know his name is Joshua. But English is not a sin. It is not a sin to use English. So we, we can say Jesus. It's all right. We know that the letter uh, J wasn't even invented till 1,500 years after Jesus was already born and died. So we know that his name is Joshua. When King Herod heard that there was going to be a king born, when King Herod heard that there was a child going to be born, and that child is a king, the Edomite King Herod said, we're not having that. Two kings can't rule at the same time. There were men who could read the stars, probably from the tribe of Issachar. They knew how to read the stars and, and the sky. They knew what star to look for. And this star followed, and they followed this star. This star led them to exactly where Jesus was going to be born. Not sure how many men it were, but we do know that they brought three gifts. What were the three gifts they brought? Why did they choose these three gifts? Out of all the gifts in the world that you could have brought, why did they choose these three gifts? Matthew 2.11 says, And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and they worshipped a child. We know that the Bible says specifically, even in the Ten Commandments, you are only to worship God. Why did these men, and they were considered wise men, why did they worship a child, a child that can't even speak? And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts. One of the gifts they brought was gold. You would bring a child gold? Frankincense. And they also brought him myrrh. Gold is a gift for a king. It's just customary to bring gold to a child king that's born or bring gold to a king, an already established king. But why would you waste your money on expensive gold for a baby? First Timothy 6.15 says, which in times past, I'm sorry, which in times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate. That means a person that has all power, rulership. The king of kings, not just a king, but Herod is saying he wants to destroy this child because he can't have another king. The Bible says this child is king over that king. He's president over presidents. He's king of kings. And in addition to him being king of kings, he's the Lord of all lords. This, this ain't no ordinary baby here. In Revelation 19 and 16, it continues that same thought when he says, and he hath on his vesture, on his outfit, on the bottom part of his outfit, the part that covers his thigh, it has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That baby is coming back. And that baby in Revelation coming back has the same title, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's our Jesus. That's who we've been singing about. But gold is a gift for a king. I need to understand why these men brought gold for a baby. Why would you waste money? On, on, on a baby. Why would you bring gold for a baby? Well, the Bible says in Revelation 17, 14, these shall make war with the lamb. This is a prophecy. This, this is eschatology. This is going to happen. And the lamb shall overcome them. Who's the lamb that we're talking about here? That same baby, that same Jesus, that same king, for he is Lord of Lords. He is King of Kings. And they that were with him are called the chosen and the faithful. Who is this baby? If you don't have the revelation of who Jesus is, I'm going to tell you. The Bible says that even in Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 17, it says, for the Lord your God, who is he talking to? Who's the your? The Lord your God is God of gods 
and the Lord of Lords. Wait a minute. This is an Old Testament scripture. This is the, the stuff that wrote Moses wrote. This is in Deuteronomy. Is this why Jesus said the books that Moses wrote, he wrote of me? Here you have Moses talking to God and writing down what God is saying. And God is, and Moses is writing that God is God and he's the Lord of Lords. Wait, I thought Jesus was Lord of Lords. I thought the baby was Lord of Lords. How in the world can you have two people being called King of Kings and Lord of Lords? Unless Jesus Christ is Lord. Unless Jesus Christ is that baby. At Deuteronomy 10, 17. All right. For the Lord your God is God of gods. Bless your holy name, Jesus. You're still in control and I honor you, God. And Lord of lords. The Bible says God is, God is Lord of lords. The Bible says Jesus is Lord of lords. That don't make sense unless Jesus is God. All right. A great God, the Bible says. A mighty and a terrible which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. You can't bribe this God. He don't need nothing from you. That's why the Bible says every knee shall bow. And that's why the Bible says every tongue shall confess. Confess what? That Jesus is Lord. They already called him Lord. So what sense does it make for God to make a decree that one day, one day, everybody, I don't care who it is. I don't care what you look like. I don't care how much power you have. I don't care if you're dead, he'll raise you back up. And why does the Bible say that every person is going to have to bow down and say that he is something that he already is? They already called him Lord. Why would there be a prophecy of something that's already happening? You can find all through the Bible, they're calling Jesus Lord, right? The only way that makes sense is unless Jesus Christ is God. And that word Lord there is saying God. You're going to bow down, you're going to kneel down, and you're going to confess that Jesus is God. You're going to say that Yahshua is Yahweh. And there's no gift, nor fitting, there's no gift that you can possibly think that's better, that's more uh, precious than gold. Because gold is royalty, and God is royalty, and God is majesty, and God is mighty, and God is majestic, and God is holy, and God is king, and God is Lord. Yes. Yes, he is. Why would you waste money on gold on a child? Well, because the Bible says in Isaiah 9, 6, this might be my favorite scripture for Christmas time. I want everybody to think about this baby that we're all supposed to be worshiping. This baby that we should be giving gifts to. What gift do you have for this baby? It's his birthday, supposedly, right? And we know that this is not his birthday. We know that there's no possible way he could have been born on this day. But if you have any day to choose to worship him, okay, fine. But how are you worshiping him? You gave everybody a gift. What did you give him? The Bible says, for unto us, a child is born. Who's the us? We need to figure out who he's talking to. Who's he prophesying to? Who is this child born unto? The Bible says, unto us, a son is given. Who's the us? And the government shall be upon his shoulder. There's 144,000 Israelites that's going to be on his shoulder. There's going to be 144,000 people that he's going to choose to rule. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Every time you open your mouth and you say the word wonderful, that name belongs to God Almighty. There's, there's nothing more wonderful than Jesus. There's nothing more full of wonder than God Almighty. Counselor. We know what that means. We know we can go to God with any of our problems and he'll be an advocate for us. But the Bible says that child, we're still talking about this child. We're still talking about this son. We're still talking about this baby in the manger. That child, according to the Bible, is mighty God. The Bible says, call that child mighty God, the everlasting father, and the prince of peace. We got the prince of peace part. Nobody has a problem with that. Nobody has a problem with calling him wonderful. No one has a problem with calling him a counselor. But why do we get mixed up and messed up? Because we can't see a child being God. We can't see a child being the everlasting father. But this Jesus, this child ain't no ordinary child. That's God almighty. The wise man knew that. When they saw his star, Polaris, yes. the North Star, when they saw that star, they know the location of God Almighty. That's why we sing the song saying Emmanuel, because Emmanuel means God is with us. That baby is God. God is with us. They also brought frankincense. They also brought frankincense. They brought gold and they brought frankincense, which is expensive also. Why in the world would you bring a baby frankincense? Why? Because the Bible says he is the priest and the lamb. If you read Hebrews 7, 17, it says, for he testified, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. 
Only a priest can offer atonement for our sins. Do you know that there are some religions that don't even offer atonement for your sin? They don't even have a way to offer uh, atonement for salvation. They don't have a process to get your sins atoned. What would you do if your sins are remain inside of you and they're not remitted? What would you do if there's not something or some way to purge those sins out of you and wash your record clean? What would you do if you have to stand before the Lord and God Almighty has never forgiven you? He's never washed you with his blood. Only a priest can offer atonement for our sin. Only a God lamb, not just a lamb, a God lamb can die for our sins once and for all. We don't have to keep killing lambs anymore. We don't have to use the lamb's blood anymore because Jesus' the blood is almighty. His, judge is, his blood is perfect. And he used his blood one time to atone for our sins. One time, all the time, forever. We don't have to kill any more lambs because he is the lamb, the almighty lamb. He is a God lamb. The priest's job every day was to light these incense every morning. This child had a job before he was even born. I mean, before he was even able to walk, he had a job. He had an assignment. He had to be a priest. He had stuff that he had to do. He had to atone for our nasty, dirty sins. Melchizedek preceded the Levitical priesthood by five generations. Jesus is the high priest. He's also the ancient of days. You know what ancient of days mean? That means he's ancient of days. He existed before the sun existed. He's before the sun. He's also a mediator. He's a mediator between judgment and grace. He's the only person that can be all of these things at the same time. But they also brought him something else. They brought him an insult. Imagine having a baby shower. You're excited that you're having a baby. Imagine having people over. Can you imagine somebody coming when you bring the baby home from the hospital? Can you imagine somebody bringing a casket? A small size baby casket. Can you imagine? They say, here, here's a gift. You unravel, unravel the gift and it's a casket. Can you imagine someone coming saying, hey, you just brought the baby home. Before I even ask what the name is, let's start working on the obituary. Can you imagine how, how rude that would be? How dare you bring myrrh as a gift? Myrrh is what you use on a dead body. It's like bringing embalming fluid. When that person walks in with that casket, when that person walks in with that myrrh, when that person walks in and talks about doing an obituary, the celebration is over. Stop taking pictures, shut it all down. How can you consider celebrating death at a birth? These wise men were wise but based on the gifts that they brought. What gifts would they have brought your parents? These same men. The same wise men. What gifts would they have brought your parents based on your destiny? What would the gifts mean that they bring based on your destiny? Because they came knowing that this child needed to be reminded of his purpose. I know you're happy, Mary. I know you're happy, Joseph. You got a baby. I know you're celebrating, but I need to let you know this baby is here for a purpose. He has a reason. There's a reason for him being here. And he has to complete this task. Mary Jesus must. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your family. But let me remind you that you got to die just like Jesus has to die. And after death comes the judgment. What are you going to do when the Lord requires an explanation for the years that he gave you? However many years you got, what are you going to do? It's time to prepare now. It's time to get ready now. While you're waiting, it's time to get closer to God. Some things in your life has to die. And death means separation. You have to separate from worldliness. You have to separate from your fleshly desires. You have to separate from some things that you want to do. You have to separate from some pleasure. This ain't the time to backslide. This is the time to find out, God, why am I here? Why did I come here? What did you send me here for? We know that Jesus came here for one purpose. To die, to shed his blood and die. What is your purpose? And if you haven't figured out what your purpose is, that doesn't mean you don't have one. That just means you need to spend some more time with God to find out what your purpose is. You need to spend some more time with a spiritual leader to find out what your purpose is. And when you find out what your purpose is, then you'll find out what your destiny is. And then your life will be complete. When you find out the inside of your circle, 
the, the people that you work with, the people that you go to church with, the people that you, you live in your neighborhood with, the people that you see at your grocery store, when you find out that God has charged you to, 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 send, uh, to uh, sow a seed with one of those people, one of those people cannot be saved until you open your mouth, until you give them a card, until you do something until you remix a video, until you send them a video, until you do something. That's your purpose of being here. First, to get saved, to die off, to kill off your flesh. That's your purpose of being here. God knew what his purpose was. The wise man knew what his purpose was. He had to remind the parents, don't get too happy. This child has a purpose. And in 33 years, you won't have this child anymore. He's going to die. What is your purpose? What are you here for? That's not what you want to think about during Christmas, is it? But as we end this year, I want you to start next year searching for your destiny, searching for your purpose, trying to figure out why did I come here? Why did God put me in this family? Why did God have me in this neighborhood? Why does God have me living in this state? Why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? God did not send you to this earth to be a consumer, to go to school, to learn how to go to work so you can be a buyer or a seller and then live your life consuming a bunch of stuff and die and leave it here. God has come here, has sent you here for one purpose, to do his will, to go get him a worshiper, to sow a seed for somebody. That's all it takes. Sometimes it can just be your lifestyle that you're living that'll draw somebody to come and ask you, why do you dress like that? Why don't, I've never heard you curse. How come I see all of your posts on social media clean? I don't see you saying anything wrong or doing anything out of order. How come I, how come I, every time I invite you to the club, you never come? Maybe it'd be just that. That would be just enough for you to spark a conversation and say, because I serve Jesus, because I'm living for Jesus, because when he comes back, I want to go with him. When I see him, I want to see him in peace. I want him to be happy with me. I want the angels, the grandstand of heaven. When I arrive, I want everybody to be looking at me and say, he's here. Hey, he's here. I want everything that I do on this earth to be pleasing to God. When I wake up in the morning, I want every demon in hell to know I'm coming for you. I'm going to kill one of y'all today whether it's a suicide demon, whether it's a depression spirit, whatever it is, I want to kill a demon every day and I want to win a soul every day. And if you want to help God's people see the kingdom, if you want to help God's people get to heaven, you need to find out your destiny. You need to find out your purpose. You need to spend some time with God and ask him. Everybody needs to do that. Everybody needs to talk to God and say, Lord, what is it specifically that you want for me to do? And hide your face in the Bible Hide your face searching in, the, in his words and see what kind of things in the Bible that resonate with you and pray about it until God says, this is what I want you to do. This is the person that I want you to talk to. This is the person I want you to witness to. And when, once that happens, you'll realize there's a lot of issues in your life don't even mean anything. There's a lot of problems in your life that's so minute because I have to save a soul. This, so, this person that I'm talking to right now has way bigger problems than I have. What I thought I was going through is nothing compared to what they're dealing with. You just lost a loved one. They just lost two loved ones and they have to deal with that. And you, God has put you in their life to minister to them. That's your purpose. That's what you're here for. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for all of your support throughout the year. Thank you all for everybody who's who, who liked, who commented, who shared these videos. Thank you for everybody who subscribed. We got some good things coming next year. We got some marriage classes coming next year. We got some uh, diet classes, some exercises. We've got some behind the scenes coming. Stay with us. If you haven't sub subscribed already, please consider doing so right now. This video right now that you see, you're seeing just a part of, of me talking because YouTube will always copyright me for the music. If somebody out there knows how to get around that, how we can sing songs to the Lord and not get a copyright strike, please let me know. But if you join us live every Friday at 7 p.m., you can join in on the worship with us. You can worship God right from your own home. And on Tuesday nights at seven o'clock, we have diaspora teaching. You can join us in the same uh, channel that you're watching us from, from uh, covenantservants.com, or you can watch us on covenantservants.online.church. You can also search us on YouTube, Covenant Servants LTD. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate it.